Thank you, Dr. Fonseca Chavez, for joining us again. You grew up in Grants, New Mexico, in a Hispanic family. Um, what kind of conversations did you have growing up about New Mexico's past before you became a scholar in terms of this Hispanic colonial traditions? Was this a conversation that you had on your family? Or were you even aware of it? Actually, I probably wasn't even really aware of it growing up in Grants. I knew that you know, I knew the Noyate had been in that area. I knew that, you know, I lived in a former uranium mining boom town. I knew that where I lived just outside of uh, Grants in a double wide trailer off I-40 was previously the carrot capital of the world. Uh, they grew a lot of carrots in that region. Um, the soil was, you know, perfect for that. So I knew all these sort of little things about the region. Um, in my immediate family, we didn't talk a lot about those things. Um, my grandmother lived in Gallup, New Mexico, and so we often took trips to Gallup. And so I think for a lot of people in New Mexico, uh, growing up in a Hispanic family, you tend to live these experiences rather than sit down and have deep conversations about them. So when we lived in, uh, we had moved to Powake, uh when I was in elementary school and uh, it wasn't dual language programs that were in place. It was just, there was a cultural component to our learning. So once a week we would go to Senora Valdez's class and we would, um, you know, we would sing Spanish songs. We would write in, I have a, a little notebook from third grade that says like, Así es Nuevo México. And it's uh, sort of this like weird compilation of my like uh, substandard like bilingual skills at the time. And I'm like, una vez we went to go fishing and we caught un pez, you know? So there, it was, it was an attempt for us to connect with our cultural heritage, but in a way that didn't seem forced. And my teacher in third grade, his name was Mr. Valdez. He was from Tierra Maria. And I remember him being in class with his guitar singing La Bamba. And so we were always really immersed in the culture but we, I don't remember having like critical conversations about it. And it wasn't until I got to UNM where, like I said, I started having very visceral responses to what was going on around me. And I think that sort of determined what my scholarly trajectory was gonna be. Now we were having a visceral debate in the, on, in the streets in Albuquerque and in Santa Fe around these monuments. But what is it like in the academy with your work uh, from the Onate Project to uh, your current book is there, are there scholars that are, is the Academy on having these same visceral debates uh, amongst themselves, or is this seems to be the direction that the scholarship is going around this debate in New Mexico and the American Southwest? I mean, there's a lot of scholars um, that have been doing this great work, Michael Trujillo, Yolanda Leva, um, individuals throughout the Southwest who are responding to these sort of colonial era statues and monuments. Um, one of the conversations I was having yesterday, which I thought was pretty uh, interesting, was that this is the work that we have signed up to do, right? This is our job. This is what we've dedicated ourselves to do, to do the scholarship and the research that helps people understand the context of what's going on. Now, we're not community activists. Um, community activists have, you know, a separate role, but there are also opportunities for, you know, people who do scholarship and community activists to work together in different ways so that we can come to a better understanding of what's happening. Um, you know, it's difficult, like I said, to not be physically in New Mexico and viewing these things as someone who is interested in oral histories, ethnography, sort of looking, you know, that sort of field work that is important to understanding the context, right? And instead you get to read uh, what's been written in the newspapers, what friends have shared with you, you know, videos that they share with you and ask you not to share with anybody else. So you do have some kind of context from being outside of New Mexico, but it's not the same as being a community activist. But I have to tell myself at the end of the day, you're not a community activist. You're a professor that works at an institution and you have your sort a different kind of activist agenda. Thank you, Dr. Fonseca Chavez for joining us. We appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Russ.